There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient To know the love of God was at hand But now I can say If you are discouraged Struggling just to make it through another day You've got to let it go Let it all go And this is what you have to say I, I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God I no more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life And my heart is open wide Yes, I'm only here for God no more struggle, no more strife With my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit Yes, I'm only here for God We are free in the spirit and we get an amen on that. And we are only here for God. Good morning. My name is Darren Wells, and I am honored to be your platform assistant for this sixth day of November. And we are all about grace this month and release and letting go. So that song by... Ricky Byers and performed so wonderfully by our Mr. Jim Maneri. So, full, yes, so fulfills exactly what our focus is for this 11th month of the year. And so we begin by honoring the light in ourselves and each other through the symbol of light. The candle to my left is what we call the Christ candle. And we call it that because much like the light that was in our elder brother, way shower, and master teacher, Jesus the Christ, we too have the light of divinity within ourselves, inborn divine potential. And so we often say in unity, I behold the Christ in you. So let's turn within for a moment of prayer. In the honor of that abundant grace, ever flowing, and our oneness with spirit and with each other, we give thanks for this moment. We give thanks for this beautiful gift of life and of light. As we see the divine in ourselves and in our neighbors. Much as our friends in the East say, Namaste, the divinity within me greets, honors the divinity in you. We behold the Christ in all persons. And we know that spirit is at work here and now bringing order, harmony, and balance to our lives. And for this acknowledgement, for our ever-expanding consciousness, we say, thank you, God, together. Thank you, God. Amen and amen. And once again, I welcome you to Unity of Columbus. It's a beautiful autumn day. It's great to see your shining faces, and I'm so honored 
uh, that those of you who are joining us at a later time are doing so. By being a part of this service, you are helping to uplift the consciousness of planet Earth, one person, one heart, one mind, one soul at a time. As I mentioned at the top, we are looking at that quality of God called grace. So throughout this calendar year, we've been looking at, so far, 10 aspects of God with a simple theme, God is. And last month, we looked at oneness. God is oneness and abundant prosperity. Today, God is eternal grace, ever unfolding. There but for the grace of God go I. And so we see God not as the personified old man up there away from us, as Reverend Dan will be explaining later in his message, but rather we see God everywhere, everywhere present in every one, even in what appears to be empty space between us. And it is that grace that we are talking about here in unity. And so in that spirit, let us affirm our statement of faith, which just grounds us in that idea that we are one with all life. I will speak that statement once and invite you to affirm it after me. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God the good, all love together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God, the good, all love. Let's take that statement within. Let those words just resonate in your consciousness as we take it silently. And so with a steady and unwavering faith, we say together again aloud our statement of faith together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good, all love. And so it is. You see, this universe is love. Love is the gravitational force that binds us all together. And as it says in 1 John, God is love. And it is that love that is the very foundation of grace. You see, it is the nature of the universe, this creative universe, to respond to our thoughts. It is life as we know it is biased, if you will, in favor of our good health, of our well-being, of our joy. And it is only in consciousness that we separate ourselves from this all good that God is. And so unity as a spiritual movement is your invitation to know your oneness with that love, with life, with all that is. So we have, of course, our ministries, such as this one, one of over a thousand unity ministries in the world. And we also have our prayer ministry, Silent Unity. We have our publications, many booklets and pamphlets, which I'll invite you to peruse our lobby after service if you've not done so in the past, or if it's your first time here in a while. And just know that you are a part of something truly special just by being a part of this service today. The most popular of our publications is the Daily Word magazine, which has been in print for nearly 100 years. And today, for our Daily Word, we have one of our licensed Unity teachers, Susanna Warren, who will come up now and share today's word. The theme is balance. I honor life's shifting rhythms. Sometimes trying to balance my schedule, meet my obligations, and even find time 
for the things I enjoy can leave me scrambling to figure out how to fit it all in. Today, I take my cue from nature and notice the rhythms of the seasons and tides, the cycles of growth, and the order that underlies all things. I appreciate how seamlessly the natural world balances itself and restores herself to harmony. This gift of harmony and balance lives in me. I honor myself when I flow with it instead of forcing my will upon it. I listen to my body's many signals. I rest when I'm tired. I eat when I'm hungry and socialize and seek solitude as I need to. As I care for myself, I find balance. And the scripture is in Ecclesiastics 8.15, For there is nothing better for people under the sun than to eat, drink, and enjoy themselves. Thank you so much, Susanna. In today's affirmation, once more, I honor life's shifting rhythms. Let's affirm that together. I honor life's shifting rhythms. Mm, And so it is. And as I mentioned before, Unity has a 24-hour prayer ministry, which we call Silent Unity. Prayer is the foundation of the Unity work and for Over 110 years here in Central Ohio, this ministry has had prayer as its foundation. And so we pray together in the spirit of unity, of oneness, knowing that, as I mentioned before, the universe is working to bring about our highest good, yours and mine, biased in favor of our good health, our well-being, our joy, our harmony, our Balance and prayer is the key, for life is consciousness. So I invite us now to close our eyes. We just take a deep breath. And let it all go. And with each exhale throughout this prayer and, and through our meditation with Reverend Dan, I invite each exhale to be a prayer of release of letting go, for in doing so we free ourselves of anything we may have carried in with us. So I invite you now to join with me in a simple exercise. Take a look back in your past, whether it is minutes in the past or decades in the past. If there is anything in your past that is causing you constriction, suffering, In this moment, I invite you to be free through the gift and the blessing of forgiveness. Forgiveness is truly an act of the will. We can choose now, this moment, to let go of that which has burdened us in the past, that we may make room for more good, more harmony, more balance in our lives. So will you join with me this morning in affirming, I forgive and I am free. Together, I forgive and I am free. And from that consciousness of freedom, we turn our attention to praying with and for others. And so we join together with silent unity, holding the high watch for our world, for each other, for our spiritual community. And so we no longer, as we pray affirmatively, knowing the grace or favor of God is in our favor. We no longer see others or ourselves as broken, lost, tired, poor, sick, impoverished. Rather, we see oneness abundance, love, 
limitless ah, divine potential realized. One thought, one opened mind, one opened heart at a time. And so in holding that high watch, we release and let go of any lingering concerns or tension about certain outcomes to what we might think ought to be and simply be present, be still, and trust with an absolute faith that God is present, that God is omnipresence, working always, mighty in the midst of us, in ways we cannot perhaps envision or imagine right now. But all things work together for good. For this realization, for this time of community prayer, we are so blessed and our cups are filled to overflowing with joy and gratitude as we say thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Amen and amen. And so now for our time of meditation, let us affirm in song, God is, I am. this song during the week to remind myself that God is not like Santa Claus. God is, I am, right here, right now, right here, right now. God is, I am. I invite you to relax completely where you are, breathe in fully and completely, and just release and let go. This is our time of meditation when we just allow our focus to be on this moment in time. This moment, not the past, not the future, but just who and where we are. We allow ourselves to be also aware of this power that is God in, through, around, and as us. We begin by relaxing the physical body. Hmm. And that relaxation moves through the face, the jaw and the neck, into the shoulders, up and down the back, adjusting and aligning, into the arms and hands and fingers. Continue to focus on the breathing and our awareness moves through the chest and abdomen, into the hips, and thighs and knees and calves, ankles, feet and toes. You feel a sense of serenity 
in our entire physical body. If there are any areas of your physical body in need of healing, then breathe into those, the healing light and love of God. Feel them surrounding your tissues, your bones, your muscles, your life, your brain, and know that God is the divine intelligence in every cell of your being. Relax, trust, know that what God wants for you is your highest and best and feel that healing happen as you let go any resistance, any worry, any neediness, any doubt. If there are areas within your life that are in need of healing, perhaps you have a challenging relationship that you need to deal with, or perhaps there's a financial situation, breathe into whatever is going on, this healing light and love of God. If everything's going great for you, breathe in great gratitude for that and magnify that energy. We can't control what goes on in our lives, but we can take charge. We can point ourselves in a direction. We can choose. We have this power of will, the ability to choose how we are going to lead our lives. I would like to know that whatever I'm doing, wherever I'm going, whether I'm feeling challenged or on top of the world, that I can remember to get closer to my God awareness, closer in gratitude, closer to replace doubt with certainty, to replace worry or fear with a sense of calm, with a knowing that as I remain in God awareness, I will see, feel, and know the answers that are mine, the direction that is mine to take, my path. And I will feel as though I am never alone. Wherever I am, God is. We say that in our prayer for protection. Wherever we are, God is. As we are in this closer walk with God, as an energy, as life, as love. We're not alone. We're doing this together. We want to be in a place where we can reach out and know that we are on this same earth at this same time. We are living souls. And there is something that is between us that is positive. There is a reason for me being in your life and you in mine. There is a reason, an opportunity with any of these. So we choose to see the highest and best in another, knowing that as we see someone is a reflection of who we are, not who they are. Let us take a moment to go within, to notice any judgments, doubts, or fears that we have, and then coat them over with the warm love of God. Let's take a moment as we rest in the silence. We focus once again on our breathing, breathing in completely and fully, and then just ah, releasing, relaxing, letting go. We know that wherever we are, God is. We can never be any place where God is not. We have opened our minds, our hearts, our souls for an infilling of God awareness. The opportunity we have right now is just to collect that to be aware of that, to accept that, to believe that, to know that, to be 
all we are called here to be, all we are created to be. We focus once again on our breathing, bringing our attention to this time and this place. And we close this meditation in gratitude, absolute gratitude. We say, thank you, God, for all that you are in, through, around, and as us. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Are you familiar with the word anthropomorphism, anthropomorphic? It's about how we attribute human characteristics to God, qualities to God. It's when we call God the big guy in the sky, that type of thing. Well, this lesson is entitled A Closer Walk with God. And while the title might be anthropomorphic, I think maybe we are talking more about a metaphorical understanding. See, it's just one way that we relate to this higher power for us to define God, to explain God is practically impossible. Words will never do that justice. But we want to think of God and ourselves and our understanding of God as in some kind of a balance. We see God as imminent within us and also transcendent above and beyond us. We know God is personal. You might have conversations with God from time to time and impersonal, that energy that put together whatever it took to create the universe. We know God as within me, as me, all around me, in you, as you, all around you, as omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence. Understand, I'm not saying omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, because we're talking about the quality of God, not a personality or a power of God. Our goal, among other things, is to realize our oneness with God. God, the universe, wants to express to us and as us for our highest good. We simply need to be open to it. Somebody wrote, God gives every bird its food, but does not throw the food into its nest. So God is not a man. We might have been raised understanding God in those personal ways that sounded like God was a male figure. And much of the Bible is written like that. But that's because that's how those folks who wrote the Bible understood God at the time. God is not a man. God is not capricious. God does not change God's mind. God is not controlling. And here's a couple you might have a hard time with, but I ask you to just keep your mind open. God is not powerful. God is not loving. What? No, God isn't just powerful. God is the power itself, the power all around us, through us, as us. God is not just loving. God is love. It says that in the Bible, certainly. God is love, the energy that is love, the harmonizing force of the universe. So how do we get in contact with this, this great power that we know is God? We use the power of prayer. Prayer is what we use to connect with God. I like to think of prayer as conscious awareness of God. We have a lot of distractions, though. We have our busyness. We have the computer, the TV. We have our doubts. From time to time, we might even wonder if there is such a thing as God. Maybe we just connect with God in emergencies. Oh, God, help me. Or in the midst of noise, or when we are putting things off, we're procrastinating, we need to get back to God, our thoughts and feelings. 
combine together as prayer. It's prayer for this and that. But what's most important is to understand where your prayer is from. It is from a positive expectation. Is it? Is it from a desire, a hope? Is it from an alignment with a belief that the absolute truth is that this energy that we call God by so many different names is seeking to express to, through, as you. So we are actually living in prayer. One of the best ways to notice how we're doing is notice the words we use. Know that they have the power that we give them. Now, in Unity, we talk about a, a five-step method of prayer and meditation, for that matter. We begin by relaxing the physical body, as I do with all my meditations. And then we focus. We meditate. We go into the silence. And then we move into gratitude. You may even start with gratitude. That's always a good idea, too. And the answers to our prayers don't necessarily come as a knock on the door with some gift. They often come as divine ideas. And it may come during a dream or as just an aha, when you're not even thinking about it, but you're taking a walk and suddenly, oh, this idea comes to you. This makes a lot of sense. Let me work with this. Now in Unity, we have a lot of prayer tools. And they include the daily word. We read the daily word each Sunday. Hopefully you have a copy and you read it every day, either as a physical copy or online. We need to remember always that we are spiritual beings having this human experience. You may wish to meditate. I seek to meditate in the mornings, sometimes in the evening, but in the mornings primarily to get things started, to just be in alignment with that which is God. Have you ever called Silent Unity? Silent Unity has been praying with folks for over a hundred years. And the number is easy to remember, 1-800-NOW-PRAY. 1-800-NOW-PRAY. 1-800-669-7729. Call them whenever you just want to feel a connection. You don't have to be in a place of desperation to call silent unity. As a matter of fact, you may wish to call them from time to time because you've noticed answered prayer. We love to hear that at silent unity, that somebody is calling to say, I thank you for being there for me. I want you to know my prayer has been answered. Maybe you find God in nature. But it can be a regular thing that you do. I have a website that I've had for a long time. I think they're doing a little bit of work on it right now called 111pray.com. And it shows up to encourage people to pray at 111 in the afternoon or in the morning. And the reason I chose 111 is because 111 has had a lot of meaning for me. And if you look up, especially in the New Testament, through the Bible in the New Testament, chapter 11, verse 1, or chapter 1, verses 11, verse 11, oftentimes there's some amazing things you'll find. I've shared some of that on the website, as well as practices from other types of prayer, other religions. So that's a website, 111pray.com. I'm hoping that that's working by the time you hear this. And we want to share our answered prayer. Meister Eckhart once said this, the seed of God is in us. Given an intelligent and hardworking farmer, it will thrive and grow up to God, whose seed it is. And accordingly, its fruits will be God-natured. Pear seeds grow into pear trees, nut seeds into nut trees, and a God seed into God. I'm going to share a reading from Helen Malakote called My Name is I Am. 
I was regretting the past and fearing the future. Suddenly, my Lord was speaking. My name is I am. He paused. I waited. He continued. When you live in the past with its mistakes and regrets, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I was. When you live in the future with its problems and fears, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I will be. But when you live in the moment, this moment, it is not hard. I am here. My name is I am. I love that. So easy for us to remember when we live in the moment that all things are working together for good. We're, we're noticing what is. We're in contact with God. It's not just about knowing scripture or the daily word or the Bible for that matter. In fact, I read about a man named Rudy. Rudy had a photographic memory. And so he read the Bible and he knew the Bible inside and out. If you asked him a question about the Bible, where do they talk about uh, eagles, the bird eagle in the Bible? He'll tell you where it was. He'll have the, the actual scripture placement and he'll be able to read it back to you because he has it memorized. This man went on a ride with Rudy, who knew the Bible inside out. And during the drive, Rudy yelled at his kids, he yelled at other drivers. He, he had a, an attitude that was absolutely horrendous. He knew all the words, but not the true meaning. We need to practice what we teach, not just memorize words. Sometimes memorized words are absolutely helpful because we might have an affirmation that really works for us. But it's not the words. It's the inspiration that those words bring to us. There is a power, a very positive thought of health, of happiness, of attitude, of ideas. We need to lock into that, lock into the positive thoughts, because you see, there's just as much power in negative thought as there is in positive thought. We are the ones doing the thinking, doing the feeling, and we are the ones who are sending that energy out into the universe. Positive energy, not so positive energy. We're the ones doing it. We are in charge of our lives. We can't control them, but we can take charge. And we can experience God. Maybe this has happened to you, probably has. It's happened to me more than once. In the most peculiar of circumstances, not always in the middle of meditation or at a Sunday service. I don't know if I shared this story with you or not, but there was a time when I was preparing to go into ministerial school. We had to send up an application to be checked out to see if we could even truly apply. So we had a pre-application, then we had an application. And then we went up to Unity Village, in the Kansas City area, for interviews to be accepted into the Unity Ministerial Program. Well, they probably had 50 or 60 people there, maybe more, but not everybody was going to get into the program. Many times people had to wait a year, two, five years till they got ready, till they had their classes all together. And the people that were doing the interview, sets of interviews, felt this person is ready. Everybody was nervous. I was nervous. I had befriended somebody who also was seeking to get into the program. And we went into the Silent Unity Chapel. Uh, that's a, a pretty good size place there at Unity Village. And I was up in the far left in the back. 
and Carl was in the very front toward the right. We were the only ones there. We thought we would go get this silent unity energy so that we could be ready for our next interview. I felt that I'd gone through my first interview and it did not go as well as I hoped it would. Anyway, here I am in the silent unity chapel and the most amazing thing happened. I had my eyes closed. I was just meditating. I was just breathing. Uh, and then I felt Carl put his arms or his hands on my shoulder and just kind of stayed there for a moment and gave him a squeeze. And it was like, you know, he believed in me and I thought that was really nice. And I turned to thank him and there was not anybody there. He had left five minutes before. I don't know where that encouraging squeeze came from, but my interview was great after that. <laughs> and I figured I couldn't do wrong. Well, I was accepted into the program and that was great. I remember a few years past that, I was driving over a bridge in Jacksonville, Florida. Big, long bridge, miles long. And I got to the top and I was heading down and the strangest thing happened. I had this spiritual experience. I was actually lifted from my body. I was in a place where I could see like everything and how all things work together. And there was no fear. It was just, it was glorious. It was a time where I felt like now I can just trust that no matter what happens, there is a, a, a connection with something greater that is about love and understanding and acceptance. And then shoom, I was back into my physical body. I know that sounds pretty weird, but that happened. And I had not gone very far at all. It seemed like I was out for a little while, but I came back in, I was driving and I was only a few feet more down the road. I love to be open to experiences like that. The way I think to do it is to not expect it, to not prepare for it, except to say, I am in the present moment. I am open. I am willing. I am able. And just be in that moment and see how many times you have a breakthrough or a divine idea or a certain circumstance that works out in ways that you couldn't possibly expect it to, but in a very positive way. Reverend Eric Butterworth once said about unity, unity is probably the most difficult religious discipline in the world, simply because you are face to face with God and with yourself. There is nowhere to go. There is no one to blame. There is nothing to hide behind. You realize that your life experience is the result of your keeping of the law, that God can do no more for you, that God can do through you. God can do no more for you than God can do through you. And you have the responsibility upon you of disciplining your thinking. This means that we're not alone, that we are together in this. And an opportunity that we have is to seek to find common ground. See, God is around us and expresses to us and even as us, right? God is in the one next to you, to your left or the right or in front of you or in back of you. To all those who are listening to this, you have heard the term namaste. The divinity in me greets and honors the divinity in you. There's an Imam, Khalid Latif. Uh, he had a writing called Finding Common Ground. He said, look at the world around you, but also take a deep look at the world within you. How you see someone is not indicative of who they are but it tells you a lot about who you are. When you see someone through the prism of their skin color, their race, 
and ethnicity through their social class. That's about who you are. See, it all starts within. You only give to the world what you possess in the first place. So how you see someone is not indicative of who they are, but who you are. Think about that. Next time you feel like criticizing somebody for not living up to your expectations, notice not just what, but how you notice. If you want to be closer to God, you must be closer to one another, to those like us, but also to those not like us. We read in Hebrews chapter 13, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for by doing so that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Seek out another person today, get to know them, to accept them. I've heard the word tolerance. People want to be, you know, live with tolerance, they say. I don't want to be tolerated. I don't think you want to be tolerated. You want to be accepted for who you are. We're not seeking to be perfect, just perfect expressions of the truth of who we are. So get to know, get to accept others today. You want a closer walk with God? Then believe with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, that God wants your highest and best for you. Allow prayer to be a way of life, not just an emergency cord. Realize God is in you and in others. Decide to get to know others a little bit better today and see the divinity in them. God bless you and namaste. So we here in unity have a mission, and that is with God as our source. Unity of Columbus inspires people to realize and express their divine nature in an awakening world. And you are all a part of that mission. Thank you. Reverend Dan can be reached anytime at Dan, D-A-N, Disco Alpha November, at revdan.org, and he'd love to hear from you, so send him a shout anytime. I want to thank everyone for being a part of today's service. As I said at the beginning, you are all a part of something truly special just by being here and just by being yourself, bringing your authentic self. You are always welcome here. And so we are an inclusive community. We do not tolerate, we accept, and we embrace all. All are welcome here. So we have some announcements. Today we have, of course, our fellowship next door. And then starting at 1230, our women's group led by licensed unity teacher Shirley Williams will begin at, uh, again, 1230. Be mindful of the next three Count them three Sundays that we have remaining in November. We've got all kinds of activities coming up. Uh, check us out on Facebook, Unity of Columbus, facebook.com forward slash Unity of Columbus for details. But just real quick, next week, the 13th, we have Roxy Ball, who will be giving an amazing workshop on handwriting and how that can aid in your soul's unfoldment. The following week, the 20th, every year, the Sunday before Thanksgiving, we have our Thanksgiving potluck. So come with an appetite. Think about the things you might want to, certainly you might want to eat, but also what you might want to serve. It's a wonderful way of giving back and of uh, participating in that divine law of circulation, as we call it. And finally, on the 27th, there's a wonderful workshop called... Um, the, well, having to do with the law of attraction. It's got a long title, but uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to kind of get to know some of these spiritual laws that we talk about here in Unity. And Mark, or excuse me, Carl Gruber will be the presenter, 
And he also has a book having to do with the law of attraction as well. Our community partners at AARP will be joining us on the 18th, which is a Friday from 10 to 2 for Caregiver's Day. And there's a flyer all about it out in the lobby desk. And finally, save the date. Save the date. Our Christmas concert will be the 10th of December. And I haven't said this yet, but speaking of that law of circulation, I want to give thanks to everyone once again who participated in, donated for, and bought things as a part of the rummage sale, the fall rummage sale we had last week. It was amazing uh, success. According to our board vice president and treasurer, Veronica Carter, we met the goal of $1,000 that weekend. So give yourselves a hand. And that law of circulation, God and get, giving God gives it back to you. Take a look. Go up to the loft. If you have some time during fellowship, if your legs can carry up those stairs, see the loft, see the loft, see the loft. We have a lovely uh, library arrangement there. It's kind of like, um, like those community libraries where you take a book, leave a book. If you have a book you'd like to donate, come and see myself or a board member um, and read whatever you'd like as long as the building's open. Take one with you if you'd like. And last but not least, today is the last Sunday in which you may turn in board applications. If you are an active member of Unity of Columbus, you technically will have until Friday the 11th if you'd like to turn in your application. And just to let you know, we have two, as, as we normally do, two three-year terms, and then there is one one-year partial term as well. In the back of the room, next to where our dear friend Ed is sitting, there's a little half sheet of paper called a candidate suggestion form, and I will encourage you as your board nominating committee chair this year to write down the name of someone that you know that's an active member here that you think might be a good fit for the board. We're looking for people who have that, that idea of commitment to this ministry, that want to have an active voice in its future, in its growth, in the fulfillment of that mission that I just mentioned earlier. And in helping with strategic planning, knowing who we are, why we exist as a ministry, and going forward into 2023 and beyond. So if you are a person with that interest, as long as you are not an individual paid by the ministry, as long as you are not a licensed Unity teacher, as long as you're not related to one of those two above things, you qualify. And if you are an active member, you qualify. And we have no limitations on that. If you just became a member this last April or even uh, applied for membership this fall, you are welcome. Again, as I mentioned, all are welcome. And we want to hear your voice. So again, uh, if you'd like to, we will. I strongly encourage you to pick one of those up and then place it face down on the basket to the left of the main doors out to the lobby. If anybody has any questions on kind of the requirements and the, the commitments and so forth of board service, come and see me. I will be in the lobby uh, at the desk to answer any questions you may have. And so with that, let us stand and we will affirm our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And with joy and gratitude, I once again give thanks to all of you for being present. I give thanks, I forgot to mention, I give thanks, I forgot to mention earlier, to Mr. Jim Maneri for his amazing music today. And to our licensed teacher, Susanna Warren, for reading today's Daily Word. Yeah. All right, and with joy in our hearts, let us go forward. Ah, 
in peace and in harmony and in accordance with today's daily word of balance by joining in song to sing number three in our hymnals, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Enfolded in grace together. I am one with God, enfolded in grace. And so it is. Amen. <laughs>